Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. I'm sitting here at the bench, desk, bench. Today it's a bench. And I'm getting ready to wind a 4 to 1 ballon. Ballon. It's an amalgam of two words. Balanced and unbalanced. So uh, I hear people saying it's pronounced ballon. Well, you don't say balanced. It's a balanced system. No, you say balanced. It's a balanced system. So from a balanced system to an unbalanced system, it's a ballon. Anyway, uh, I'm using instructions from the M0PZT website. There's a link in the video description. He did a really nice uh, four to one. I like the way that he wound these because you use two cores and these are T130-2s. Uh, now, these I've seen used quite often in uh, HF commercial products. There's some debate online uh, about the core material. Some say the Type 43 is a better core material for HF, and that might be true. I just don't have any on hand, but I do have these T130-2s. Again, links are in the video description to where you can buy these cores. Uh, I'm using 18 gauge doorbell wire that I picked up at the hardware store. This will be good for up to 100 watts for sure, maybe even a little higher. It might go to 200. But you're going to get some core heating if you get up there. But at up to 100 watts, I've had no problems at all using this wire and these cores to make uh, 9 to 1s and the common mode chokes. Now, M0PZT winds the two cores. I've already got this one wound. Um, this is a common mode choke. And I've talked about that in another video. If you search for uh, my call sign in common mode choke, or my call sign in the word choke, you'll find the video. Um, he winds two of these, and then he wires them together to make a 4 to 1 transformer for matching impedance from around 200 ohms down to 50. These are used in off-center fed dipoles. And the reason being, if you take a dipole and you feed it at the center point, at its resonant frequency at the center point, it presents an impedance of around 50 ohms. As you move off the center of that dipole, the impedance goes up. And when you get somewhere around a third of the way from the end to a quarter of the way from the end, uh, you get into the impedance range of around 200 ohms. And a 4 to 1 ballon then takes it down to 50 ohms, so you can feed it with coax, which is what I'll be doing on this antenna project. Um, the antenna project is quite involved, so I thought that I would do the 4 to 1 ballon uh, as its own video. And that's what we're doing. So I've got some red and white wire here. I'm going to cut off a length of it, and I'm going to wind this core the same as this one. Uh, 12 turns total. 6 around this side, we cross over, and then 6 around this side. Um, and then we will join the wires together as shown on M0PZT's site. Here's a photo off his site, uh, and you can see that the wiring is really straightforward and easy. Um, the input wires are paralleled together, and then the output wires will join the red to the white on one side, and then we'll have a red and a white out here that will go to our antenna. So really straightforward. I'm going to get to work on winding this. If you want to know how to wind these, uh, go and watch my common mode choke video where I detail winding this common mode choke because that's all you're really doing is it's one of those, uh, it's two of those, and then putting them together to make a four to one. Uh, after I've got it wound, I have a 200 ohm carbon resistor that I've already measured. It's about 202 ohms, that's fine. I'm going to put that on the output of this and then I'm going to hook the VNA up to the input and we're going to sweep it and see that we see a 50 ohm impedance and we're going to sweep the entire HF spectrum and see how it uh, how it looks across the spectrum. And then finally, I have seen on many 4 to 1s that I've looked at where they take the cores and they put them together like this for construction convenience, I guess. And apparently they don't interfere with each other or uh, well, that's apparent. Uh, I'm going to find out because I'm going to um, going to measure it and sweep it again after I put them together. And if they don't interfere with each other, I might zip tie them together like that, just for convenience on the uh, 
center insulator. What I have, <coughs> it's around here somewhere, let me go find it, here it is, for the antenna. <coughs> the antenna is going to be using ladder line as the uh, actual antenna itself, and I have 3D printed a center where the ladder line will mount on here. The uh, balance will sit here, and uh, a couple of uh, uh, ground lugs here to solder the wires to from the antenna and the balance, and that'll be my center structure for the antenna. But that's for the antenna video. Today we're just making the balance. So I'm going to get this wound and uh, wire it up, and I'll show you the uh, result, and then we'll hook up the VNA and we'll sweep it. All right, we got it all finished. I've got it uh, wired up here temporarily. Got this 200 ohm resistor tacked in on the output. I've got the mini VNA uh, hooked up to it. And I'm getting ready to load up the uh, mini VNA software here. And we will sweep it. Let this get connected. Connected. And we will sweep the entire HF spectrum. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, it looks like down at uh, 4 megahertz. Let me capture this screen for you. Okay, now we'll look at the screen. And as you can see, we, uh, starting around 4 megahertz, actually the uh, impedance all the way down at 1 uh, is, is just below 50 ohms. It's right at 50 ohms around 4 megahertz. And it looks like by the time we get up uh, to 10 meters, it's uh, somewhere around 53 ohms, 54 ohms, which is not bad at all. And the SWR is uh, right down there at uh, 1.3 uh, to 1 or so. One, uh, up to about 1 point, uh, no actually it's about 1.2 to 1 up to about uh, 1.4, 1.35, 1.3 to 1 up near the top end of the spectrum. Down at the bottom it looks like around 80 meters uh, it rises but it's still not getting above 2 to 1 so that is good. Uh, that looks really good actually. So we're impedance matching pretty well. We're getting down there to 50 ohms. Okay, now the big question that I had, and I wonder if I can do this without damaging anything, is we will stack these like so, and we'll sweep it again. Yeah, about the same. Actually, the uh, SWR came down slightly and the impedance came down slightly at the far end. So I guess we're good with stacking these together like so, which is excellent. Uh, some of you have probably noticed this and are probably going to ask about it in the comments, so I'll go ahead and clear it up now. One of these cores has plumber's tape on it. Uh, I ran out of plumber's tape, so I couldn't tape this one, but it's okay. The edges of these cores are rounded and I'm using insulated wire. The reason that they put plumber's tape on these is usually you're using magnet wire and the edges of the core are really sharp and uh, they want something to insulate it so that the core doesn't cut through the enamel on the wire and cause um, the wire to short against the core, which would be a big problem. Uh, but in this case, I'm using insulated wire. The core's edges are rounded, so they don't have to be taped. I just happen to have this one taped from a previous experiment, so that should clear that up. Okay, that's a 4 to 1 bond. Um I'll be able to mount this into an enclosure or onto the uh, center insulator, and we'll be having a good match from 200 ohms down to 50 ohms. Uh, I'll link M0PZT's site uh, if you want to read more about the construction of this particular one, but uh, as you can see, it's really straightforward. Basically two common mode choke wirings, and then you just wire them up as shown in the photograph, and that is your 4 to 1 ballon. So I'm going to get back to work on the antenna project. Watch for that video coming up next. It's a really exciting and interesting antenna, and I'm looking forward to testing it out. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, 
please click to support me on my Patreon page.